experts agree that rural development is the starting point for national development. With over 51% of Nigerians residing in the rural area from the records of the World Bank for 2016, projects such as rural development, agriculture and water resources beg for attention if the imbalance between the rural and urban population will be closed. Can the federal government of Nigeria's proposal that over 2.4 trillion naira be spent on capital expenditure in 2018 have the needed impact to curb urban migration? Or how best can rural development be implemented in Nigeria? Let's talk on Big Story. I'm Amy John Mekwa. In measuring the need for rural development, the World Bank uses development indicators, which include access to water. The United Nations Children Education Fund records that about 70 million people out of a population of about 171 million in Nigeria lack access to safe drinking water. and over 110 million lack access to improved sanitation as at 2013. The federal government has allocated over 95 billion for water resources and almost 119 billion for agriculture and rural development in the 2018 budget. Mortality rate is another factor considered in 2015, the World Health Organization identified Nigeria as having the world's fourth highest mortality rate. 814 deaths for every 100,000 live births, indicating approximately 159 women die daily because of pregnancy-related complications. According to 2013 Demographic and Health Survey, one-third of every woman does not attend antenatal care. And one factor responsible for that is user fees. There are, and there are a lot of illegitimate uh, corrupt practices also that take place in government uh, hospitals. They, they ask people to pay for files. They ask people to, you know, some of this. And so one of the things we're asking the government is that it's important for them to have like a charter. Like a, a charter where you come into the government facility. As you are coming, they do it in Syria, I don't know, and other places. You see on the charter what you are expected to pay, what you are not expected to pay. If we don't have such a thing, people will, will, will hide a lot of fees, you know, for their own benefits. And what that will do is that it will encourage more corruption. So we're asking that they should have a patient's charter, so that when you are coming to the facility, there's something telling you what the government is ready to do and what is expected of you. So you can make a decision whether you can do what the government is asking you to do. If the government is open about, you don't tell people that the primary health care is free, when it is not free, you let people know that it is not free, and this is the amount that you are expected to pay. So people can make that choice, whether it is where they can go or where they cannot go. So people found themselves in healthcare facilities, and they are detained in some of the in general hospitals because they cannot pay. In recent times in Nigeria, the insecurity situation brought about by Boko Haram attacks has highly increased the number of internally displaced persons, which the UNHCR placed at 1.84 million as of March 2017. This has also contributed to the mortality rate. The maternal health in the IDP camps is terrible because we have been to some IDP camps in Meduguri. We saw pregnant women which the health facility there is, it is nothing to write home about. And, you know, the, the maternal health in, in, that, in those camps, they are terrible. There are no drugs, no, you know, the, 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 where you see that this is, you know, there is no particular room or space that you can say, oh, okay, this is a health clinic for the IDP camps. And, you know, Women that are pregnant, you know, they find it very difficult. They only come and administer drugs by, by some NGOs, by some government, and just go like that. So the, the, the health of this thing is terrible. So you think Other factors include air pollution, employment in agriculture, and roads to link rural and urban areas. <laughs> 
The reality and consequences of insufficient infrastructure is faced by Nigerians like Mr. Jimola Sisi, a retired police officer. He retired as a senior inspector from Oyo State Command in 2013 after 35 years of service. I based myself after my retirement as a farmer now, where I'm farming uh, corns, uh, vegetable, okra, tomato and others because the farm that I'm using presently now is not suitable for cassava. It's water area so that it cannot be okay for, for cassava. Since then he had turned to farming as a means of livelihood. He lives here with his family at Owode Tetikun Ado Daughter, local government area of Ogun State. Not a very comfortable abode. We have no toilet. If we plan to dig a, a, a toilet where we will be toileting, it is not up to 12 or, or 8 feet deep in water will come out. Because all this our area is water area. We have a lot of water here. So it did not permit us to have a toilet. If we, want, if we want to toilet now, we go to the stream there or in the bush because we have a stream that's very close to us here. So we don't have a place where we can plan about a toilet. In the comfort living, as you are saying, that I don't know if government can do it for us. We have a, many lands here that government can build an estate for us. If we are to be even paying token sharing back to the government after finishing, because we have no money to develop it, and we have a lot of lands here. At the extreme back of the uh, gas line primary school that the gas line built for us here, we have a lot of lands here. From Uwode here to Aladi, from Aladi to gas line, from gas line to Ijoko. So, we need assistance from the government. Parents of six children, four of them have relocated to the city in search for greener pasture. And even Mr. Jimo would do the same if given the opportunity. Due to the situation of things as at now, if I can still see a job, being a former an, an officer, as a security man, that I will be taking token change as a salary at the end of the month, like 30 to 40,000 naira, I can still manage it to support myself with the family that I base myself upon now to support my family and be living with it. In the same area, Mrs. Idiot Adebayo does petty trading. She sometimes even spends the night in her shop. Her husband and children spend more time in Yaba area of Lagos because according to her, that is where they can work to earn money. Kinode wa no kosi bi no se si 